I was working on my 2020 Chevrolet Colorado Z71 with Duramax diesel engine three year review video when I decided maybe I should go back and look at the one year and two year review videos to see what I covered and maybe if something had changed, make a note of that in the three year review video. That's when I discovered I never uploaded the second year review video to the YouTube studio. So here it is a year and a month late and it will be followed up with the three year review video. This might help somebody who's considering purchasing one of these trucks used at a later point. Thanks for watching. So it's February 14th, 2022. I've had this Chevrolet Colorado Z71 crew cab, long box, 2.8 liter Duramax diesel pickup truck for two years. It is a used truck. It is not a new truck. That's only, I can only say that for the first year. And in those two years, I've learned a lot about the truck. I still haven't worked every gadget in it or had it, you know, I haven't operated it under every potential circumstance that I might use it under, but I've got to do a lot of evaluating. And overall, I'd say that my experience with this truck is more positive than negative, but there is some negative to it. And I thought I would take this two year mark to review both. So first off, I'm at a little bit more than 25,500 miles on the truck. I have taken it out of state a few times to include a two week road trip to Las Vegas and back. And I really got a chance to evaluate it on that road trip. I've used it for deer hunting. I've used it to haul a few things, not a whole lot. I've towed a trailer with it once and I've been accessorizing it a little at a time. I've got videos about some of my experiences with that. So the cons, well, the most obvious con, the most recent con that's been going on for a little bit more than a month now is this whining noise, which I believe is the turbocharger. When I accelerate, I don't know if you can hear that whining noise, but it's been going on for about five or six weeks now. And it, it happened after it got really cold, but even on a day where it got up to say like 46, I've been getting that and it's only on hard acceleration or if I'm in neutral revving the engine that I get that. Now, if it is a turbocharger and there's something wrong with it, I've got a 100,000 mile warranty on the truck, so I'm not worried about it. GM will make it right. But that noise is annoying. It didn't have it when I first uh, got the truck and I don't like it. It just, it's not a normal turbocharger sound as far as I'm concerned, and, you know, because that, that whistle that the turbocharger makes is kind of cool, but uh, that, that that high pitched whining noise, eh, not so much. So that's probably the worst thing about this truck in two years that I can report. Now, I haven't taken it into the dealer to have them look at it, but at some point I might. If so, I'll make a, a, a video about it if I feel it's warranted. So what other things do I not like about the truck? Well, the placement of the light switch and the uh, transfer case switch, I don't like that. They're, they're next to each other. They're the same size and, and whatnot. And it's very easy to say, switch the, the truck from four auto to, to two high and grab the, the wrong knob and turn it and turn off the lights. Uh, it just, the placement over there isn't, isn't good. I think that the four wheel drive or the transfer case control should be maybe over here somewhere or somewhere out of the way or, or be an entirely different kind of setup, a different switch or button or, or series of controls or whatever but next to each other like that, I, I don't really care for that. The other thing too is the light switch, it's very easy for me to bump it with my knee and turn on my fog lights. Uh, as far as the uh, climate control, it works fine, but it must be on some sort of relay because when you turn the blower on, it doesn't matter what speed, there's, there's quite a pause before it comes on and I don't like that, I just want it on. Whether I have it uh, heating or cooling, I don't care. I want it on, I don't like that weight. No matter what speed I have it at, the blower makes noise. And the only reason I really notice that noise is because I make videos in the truck, like right now. I've got the, the cell phone mounted in the uh, WeatherTech Cup phone and I'm making a video. So you can hear things like loud exhaust. There's a certain intersection that I could start filming at and I've learned through trial and error, don't, don't even bother because some asshole with a loud exhaust will come driving by. So it, it will pick up background noises 
and the blower might not come across that loud in, in any of my videos, but I don't like it. Right now I've got the defroster on because it's cold out, and if I'm talking a lot, I'm fogging up the window, so I kind of have to have it. But even on the low setting, it's just a little bit too loud for me. Uh, another thing would be OnStar and the My Chevrolet app. So I pay the monthly subscription for OnStar so I can get the app that lets me do things like start the truck with my phone, unlock it with my phone, check the tire pressure with my phone. It'll even email me to say, hey, one of your tires is low. I mean, I, I kind of like that, right? But uh, the My Chevrolet app for the first year, even though it worked great, it was user-friendly and worked great. After that, they did an update, and now I have to enter my email and password every time I want to go use it, and it's very slow now. It's also not as easy to navigate the app as it was. And I don't like that. It wants me to put a lock on my cell phone in order for me for it to remember my email and password. And I don't like that. I don't like having a lock on my cell phone. I'm not worried about security with my cell phone. There isn't anything you can do. Even if uh, my, my information was stored in the My Chevrolet app, all you're going to be able to do is figure out where the truck is, turn it on, turn it off, lock the doors, unlock the door. You're not going to, like, drive away in it with it. So it's my vehicle. It's my choice. I don't like Chevrolet taking my choice away and billing me for it. I've tried to contact OnStar about it, and they're really not uh, very uh, useful. I've only called them three times, and I've been disappointed. Uh, they, they just really don't, you know, they're there to handle emergencies or tell you what you could, you know, like if you ask them, is, is there a restaurant nearby, whatever, they're just going to look it up on Google. Seriously, that's all they do. So I, I don't really consider it value added. I'm keeping the app, though. Uh, maybe at some point they'll offer another uh, uh, upgrade or, 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 or whatnot, and, and it'll get better or whatnot. But I'm just going to leave it because I've got it locked in at a fairly decent price. It's not that expensive. And I'd, I'd rather have it than and not use it than, uh, you know, suddenly need it and not have it. So I'm just – I'm overall not, not happy with it. It was great at first, but, yeah, why, why if it ain't broke, don't fix it, Chevy. So – and uh, one of the reasons I called OnStar was because of another con with the truck, and that is it will not update for daylight savings time. If you have the clock set to automatic, it does not update for daylight savings time. You can manually go in there and change it, but why should I have to? It'll update when I drive through different time zones, but it won't update for daylight savings times. It knows what day it is. It knows what time it is. It knows the temperature outside, things like that. But it will not update for daylight savings time, and that is an issue. So I'm not too happy with that. Huh. Other than that, the, the truck has done fine. I've had to make one warranty claim on it. The uh, door handle was cracked, and they handled it. It was real easy. It didn't cost me a thing. It, it really didn't inconvenience me. Other than that, I just I haven't had any issues. There is a vent tube on the rear axle that looks like it's cable tied to the frame, and it must have popped loose when I took the truck off-road, and it was just dangling there. But... I mean, that was nothing. Just put it right back in the loop of the cable tie. Good to go. The truck, has, uh, the truck hasn't really had any other warranty issues. So now the pros. Now that I've, uh, you know, complained about the truck, the pros. The pros is that it gets better mileage than I ever expected. When I took it on the two-week road trip, that first week, diesel prices shot way up. I was actually concerned I was going to run out of money in my fuel budget before I made it home. I had budgeted so much based on the fuel price, and I had elevated the fuel price, but still not as much as it had gone up. The thing is, I, I based that off of uh, maybe getting in the low 20s as far as mileage, and the truck did great. As, at one point, I was averaging, averaging 44.1 miles per gallon while up in the mountains of Salt Lake City up on the interstate doing like 85 miles an hour. The truck did fantastic. Even in the city, if I drive conservatively, which I'm not doing right now, uh, I can get in the low 30s. It, it really it has impressed me, and that's one of the main reasons I got the truck and got the truck with the diesel engine, but so when I take my road trips, it's not costing me a fortune. Lots of people out there are complaining about these fuel prices being high, and they seem to have forgotten. They've been this high before. They've actually been higher before. I'm not saying that's a good thing, but because they have been and because my other truck only got 18, 19 miles per gallon, I decided that I wanted something to be more fuel efficient. This has definitely exceeded my expectations. I am very happy with it. Oil changes on it are easy to do with the filter located up top. It's very easy to do oil changes on this, but I haven't really done anything else. I have had to, to change a tire because I, I ran over a nail and I got a flat. It immediately went flat. All the alarms went off and everything else like that. 
Uh, and I did have a situation where uh, the temperature dropped a lot and one of the tires went low. The, the phone, you know, sent me a message to, hey, one of your tires is low. And I just backed it up to the bay door there at work and, and filled it up with air. But uh, it, it, and it held air pressure. And sometimes that happens with uh, temperature extremes. But other than that, um, you know, the, the tires have done better than what I have thought as far as durability. I've taken the, the truck into some uh, down some muddy and uh, icy dirt roads while deer hunting, and I don't always use four high, uh, but it's nice having four high to get out of there. I've used four high, four auto, and two high uh, when I've taken it off road, and it's done great. As a matter of fact, driving it in two high on paved streets uh, in snow and ice and whatnot, it does really good. The only time I have to put it in four autos when I'm trying to drive a little bit more aggressively because I'm running late or if I just start to slip and there's just too big of a risk of me sliding into people because it's too trafficy. Also, four auto or four high helps when I'm backing into my driveway at home if there's a sheet of ice there or in the parking lot at work that they don't tend to plow or salt very often. Uh, it's helped for that, but uh, otherwise driving on streets, I'm able to leave it in, in two high uh, more often than not, so it's kind of nice. And if I leave it in four auto, it's great because the computer won't run run the vehicle in four high if I'm on dry pavement. I mean, I could just leave it in four auto all the time, I guess, but I, I try not to do that. I really like that setting on the transfer case, and I really like the grip the tires get and just how well they've worked out overall. Uh, let's see, what else as far as... Uh, uh, pros. Pretty much all the accessories I've, I've put on the truck have worked out uh, pretty much up to my expectations. You know, the seat covers, I've, I've had this brand before, I know they're good. The floor liners I've had before, I know they're good. This uh, cup phone's working out better. And uh, some of the stuff that I've put in the back that I've shown in videos underneath the seats, uh, I, I realized that, uh, over time I've needed to add this, needed to add, I still need to add a few more things. There is a little bit of room underneath there. I'd like to see more room, but I am glad that there's under seat storage in this truck. Uh, as far as towing, I did a video on that. Uh, the truck did fine as far as braking and acceleration. It was just that the, the, the less than aerodynamic shape of the trailer caused the truck to lose 10 miles per gallon, whether the trailer was full or not. So. I'd like to try to tow it with a more aerodynamic trailer and see if I get better results. Maybe one day I'll do that. I wasn't able to use the trailer brakes. You know, I tried, but I really didn't have a situation where they would be, you know, they would work out. I haven't used the exhaust brake. Uh, so there, there are a few other gadgets for me to try out, but overall, I'm just really more satisfied with the truck than dissatisfied with the truck. Now, a pickup truck isn't for everybody. A diesel engine isn't for everybody. Some people don't like the fact that not all gas stations sell diesel or that it costs more per gallon, even though you get better fuel mileage. You know, they don't like the cost of the uh, maintenance, oil changes and things like that do cost more with a diesel. You, you, you've got to be a little bit mindful of a few things. The diesel exhaust fluid, when I'm driving on the highway at, at higher speeds, I will burn through diesel exhaust through fluid quickly. But in town, no, it lasts a while. So, you know, some people might not just, they might, might, might ah, I can't talk. They might not want to deal with that sort of thing. So the vehicle I drive isn't for everybody. But if you want a pickup truck that is almost as big as a full-size truck, but small enough that it'll fit in, you know, garages and tight parking spaces and things like that, and you want a pickup truck that you can haul five people around in or three people and a dog, you want a pickup truck that's big enough to fit a water heater in the bed or a deer in the bed. You want a vehicle that'll go down a muddy, icy dirt road, no problem, that will uh, you know, get you get you there and that you can take on long distance trips and really not worry about fuel prices and mileage. This is the truck that I think would fit that bill. If that's not what you're looking for in a pickup truck, then this truck isn't for you. I'll continue to do videos about it as I have different experiences with it as even though uh, this particular model, they're still producing it like this, uh, there's always changes. And some of the things that are relative to this truck might not be on newer models. If you're out looking for a used truck, then the information I have might help you if, if you want to know what the experience was like when that truck was newer or just maybe some things to, to be aware of if you decide to buy this truck new or used. So I know it's been kind of a long video, but I got a lot to unpack there. In, in the, the two years that I've had it, I would uh, definitely say it was uh, well worth it. And I would recommend a GMC Canyon or a Chevy Colorado to anybody out there who's looking for a truck for the same reasons I am.
Thanks for watching.